the Toyota Venza is no stranger to failure. While its upcoming replacement has made the right changes, this is still a bittersweet farewell. Other nameplates have been revived to only die once more, but the Venza may have set a record for doing it twice in just eight years. It gets rebooted in the same time frame as Batman, but why? Well, one big reason is sales numbers dropped in half after its first model year in the US. The Venza itself is a swanky box of compromise. You have Lexus quality and comfort with Toyota price and efficiency, but it also inherits several versatility disadvantages from Lexus without the prestigious badge or luxury car materials. The Crown Signia actually fixes some of these at a cost. The LE Venza is just 36 grand. The Signia doesn't even offer that spec. Considering that and the price of the perplexing Crown Sedan, I'd expect the Crown Signia to cost at least $43,000 after destination here in the US. A base Venza is an extremely smart buy right now, but the Signia does several things right. It has 24 more horsepower. It's rated to tow 2,700 pounds, which is 2,700 pounds more than the Venza. It also ditches the capacitive controls that came on most specs of its predecessor in favor of analog buttons and toggles. And crucially, its pseudo wagon proportions lend it a six and a half foot cargo space. I think its only blunder is eliminating the well-priced LE trim. Here's why. That still had most of your important features like LED projector headlights, proximity entry, a power rear lift gate, 18 inch alloy wheels, and a seductive LED light bar around the rear. Spend some more money and you could get a 360 view camera, fog lights, or bigger wheels, but in any outfit, it has a more upscale aura than its RAV4 kin. The Toyota Venza is like the adopted sibling that outperforms its brother in nearly every way imaginable, but instead of going to Hogwarts, it dies. On the inside, it's comfortable and it's premium, though there are a few ergonomic quirks. Build quality and panel fitment are good. There's a healthy amount of soft touch materials. It may not be leather from a West Highland bowl or any cow, but the Softex upholstery has a plush feeling to it. The cloth on the LE is nice too. But the materials don't improve noticeably as you pay more. The Venza's plastics are tasteful, but you'll need a Lexus if you want more authenticity. And while the seats are more supportive than many Toyotas, they don't coddle you like a luxury car. I do wish the seat bottom was a little longer, but at least all of them come with lumbar adjustment for the driver. For the money, it'll have the features you're expecting. As you step up your budget, you'll find things like a heated steering wheel, a head-up display, heated and ventilated front seats, along with a stargaze fixed panoramic roof, the latter of which can get foggy on demand, a feature absent on the new Crown. Briefly, I'd like to thank the kind people over at Royal South Toyota in Bloomington, Indiana for letting me test drive a couple of Venzas over its short life cycle. Royal is dedicated to the community. If you're in the market, Check them out. The sound systems are less noteworthy. The optional nine speaker JBL lacks crisp clarity at high volumes, but boasts a power and bass advantage over the six speaker stereo. The deciding factor that makes the LE my personal favorite is that it has analog controls for everything, including your HVAC, instead of this glossy black capacitive panel. I'm glad that the Signia addresses that and retains the same infotainment system. Updated for 23, this is straightforward with standard wireless CarPlay, a sharp resolution, and good response time. You can also get a full digital gauge cluster, but I find either setup to be nicely configurable. A couple of odd details would be standard adjustable depth cup holders. And muscle memory makes me push the info button when I want to start the car. While it's easy to knock capacitive controls, my biggest gripe with this interior is actually the girthquake of a center tunnel that rocks the cabin with poor knee room up front. A real nuisance that should be less annoying with the new Signia. At six foot three, I can sit behind myself in comfort, but not with an excess of space. 
Size support is good too. Rear console vents and USB charging ports are standard, but no heated rear seats are offered. This has a sloping roof, a spare tire, and more insulation than most Toyotas. Those are nice things to have, but they detract from the versatility. While it's fairly long, the space isn't super wide or tall. It'll require some cargo compromise compared to several of its competitors. And while that seems minor, I think that is a key reason as to why this has become a niche vehicle in the market. Which is a shame because this is a financially sound yet refined way to travel through any season. The naturally aspirated 2.5 liter inline four paired up with two electric drive motors will not set your heart ablaze. But its 219 horsepower was enough to get me to 60 in the mid seven second range last year. It takes off from a stop in a linear fashion. It changes ratios in a smooth manner. And I never feel short of passing power. We can thank some of this to Toyota's Trick eCBT. This uses an additional electric motor to change the gear ratio for the engine in a timely manner while also using a planetary gear set to actually get the power to the front axle. Despite its tendency to sing the same notes, this has nothing to do with a traditional CVT, and it results in some insane gas mileage. We're talking 39 miles to the gallon combined, and that is also with all-wheel drive, though the rear wheels are exclusively driven by a separate electric motor. That unit makes up to 54 horsepower. It is there for snow and winter. It is not designed to help you crawl over obstacles, and this does not have a brake vectoring off-road mode either. Pulling up to 65 miles per hour, there's subtle yet present tire noise a little bit of wind noise, but overall, it's a quiet car and should eat up miles with ease. Over the worst road around me, the Venza is supple. It handles all of the small to medium sized imperfections with a smoothness that few SUVs can match under $50,000. Even hitting one bump after the other, it feels car-like. It can shrug off larger potholes, throwing it around some disgusting corners. The fully independent suspension keeps this glued to the ground. It may not be entertaining, but it's quite reassuring. It handles a little better than you may expect for this soft mid-sized cruiser SUV. Body roll is certainly present but it maintains a good level of control. The steering leans on the light side. It's numb, yet it feels predictable, which helps make this an approachable car to drive. The visibility doesn't get in the way of that either. You have skinny pillars and not a huge blind spot around the back. You also still have blind spot monitoring as standard, along with Toyota's now dated Safety Sense 2.5, which includes a full suite of driving aids, just not the over-the-air updates of the new system. And it should be just as drama-free to maintain as it is to drive. The Venza has been robust since its 2021 debut. A select few have reported a stalling problem. Toyota added projector headlights to the base to address complaints. Toyota has also been fixing gas tanks on cars that weren't filling up properly, and some have had issues with the 12 volt battery draining. Expensive, easily cracking windshields are the most widely reported, however, even this hardly affected consumer reports data or owner reviews on cars.com. This should be highly dependable. Just remember the hybrid batteries have historically lasted 12 to 15 years and could run you four grand to replace. And according to the IIHS, this should be a safe vehicle, though they only tested the structurally similar RAV4. The Toyota Venza makes a compelling argument on its deathbed. You have luxury levels of ride quality, compact car efficiency, family-sized passenger space, and character that helps this stand apart without, well, for the most part, hindering its broad appeal. Don't get me wrong, today's narrative is not, how could they ever replace this masterpiece with this piece of garbage. Toyota did what good car companies do, and that is take a competent product with flaws and make it better without adding a bunch of frustrating tech. While I hope they add a base version down the road, if you need any towing capability, more cargo space, or you would appreciate physical controls on well-equipped models, I think the Crown Signia would be worth the wait. For the time being, the Venza is a Lexus for people who are willing to cut a few corners to save some money. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me take on the maniacal YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff, and to become a channel member for an additional podcast and to help support the channel. I'll catch you in the next one.